This video will be a quick run through slash tutorial of the Godot Dialog Manager add-on. I'm starting out with a blank project here. Let's grab a copy of the add-on. You can do that from the GitHub repo that's linked in the description. Copy the files into your add-on directory and enable it in project settings. Now that it's enabled, you get this dialog tab at the top of the editor. From here, we can start writing some dialog. By default, we get some example dialog, so let's run that and see what it does. You can run the test scene by clicking this button here. Press enter to progress the dialog. Use the up and down keys to select a response and press enter to choose it. Okay, this dialog is pretty simple, so let's have a read through it. Dialog nodes start with a title line prefixed with a tilde. Basic dialog lines are written as character colon dialog. Responses are in the form hyphen then prompt. You can specify the body of a response by indenting it like this or by using a jump like these two. To end the conversation immediately, use end as the jump all in capitals. Let's change this jump to point to a different node. That one doesn't exist, so you can right click and create it. We can start making things more complicated by adding conditions. To set up a conditional branch, use if, elif, and else lines. Let's make Nathan say hello, but only if we haven't met. Otherwise, he'll say hello again. Now that we have this set up, this brings me to another important point. The dialog manager itself is stateless, meaning it doesn't keep track of any variables or anything on its own. It defers to globals provided by the game to manage state. This means that whatever you're using to keep track of global game state can remain the authority. You just have to tell the dialog manager which autoloads to use when reading and mutating state. Let's quickly set up an autoload to use for state. I'll just make a new game state script and turn it into an autoload. Now, in the dialog manager runtime settings, I can tell it to use that autoload as a state provider. So, our dialog expects a property called has met Nathan, so let's add it. It's a boolean and false by default. Now, when we run it, we only get the conditional branch that matches the false value of has met Nathan. If we want to change that value once we've met, then we need to use a mutation. Mutation lines begin with either set or do, depending on what they are for. We want to set a value, so we use set. Now let's test this again and see what happens. The first time it goes through, we get hello, but when we pick start again, we get hello again. Now is a good time to point out that responses can also be conditional. So add some square brackets after the prompt and insert a condition. Let's make this prompt only appear if some value is greater than 10. But first, we need to make sure it is defined on one of our game states. If we run the test scene before defining it, you'll see we get this nice error that tells us that we are missing the sum value property on our game states. Once we add it and run again, you can see it working as expected. Mutations can also be functions, but I'll talk about that soon. So far, we've been using the test scene button within the dialog editor, so now let's show some dialog in the actual game. The add-on provides an example dialog balloon to get you started. It's actually the same balloon that the test scene uses. So here in our main scene script, we can add some code in the ready function to show a bit of dialog when the game starts. The example balloon function asks for a title to start from and the dialog resource that we are using. Now, when we start the game, it will show the dialog. This looks the same as the test scene because the test scene is also just an empty scene that shows some dialog with the ready function. Let's add a sprite and an animation to move the sprite. Now I can show you a function mutation. Let's define it in the current scene so I can show you another fact about game states. When the dialog manager is looking for properties or functions, it will first look inside the current scene. So we can define a mutation function in here and the dialog manager will happily use it if the dialog is being run in this scene. This mutation will run our animation and wait until it's done. When the dialog manager encounters a yield, it will wait until it's finished before continuing with dialog. This is handy for if your dialog is part of a cutscene and you want some action to happen in between dialog. In our dialog, we can add the mutation here. 
Now, when we run the main scene, we can see the dialogue pausing to run the animation before continuing. Okay, now let's have a look inside this example balloon to see how it's put together. Everything is pretty standard except this special label here. The Dialogue Manager add-on provides a special label node for rendering dialogue. As well as the usual BB codes that you can get with rich text labels, it adds a few more. For example, dialogue containing wait equals n will pause for n seconds at the point in the line where the marker is found. You can also use speed equals n where n is a speed multiplier. A speed of 10 will be 10 times faster to type out and a speed of 0.1 will be 10 times slower. This menu is also special. It handles the response selection. If we have a look at the code that powers the example balloon, we can see how it works. Once the layout is calculated, we run type out on the dialog label and then wait for input. If there are responses, then the menu handles that for us. You can use this example balloon as a starting point for designing your own dialog display system that fits better within your game. Let's have a quick go at doing something like that now. I'll make a copy of the example balloon directory into somewhere outside the add-ons folder. Let's change this pointer to be an animated sprite. I just removed this one and add in a new animated sprite node. Then we can set the pointer value of our menu here. Now that we have our own balloon, we can't use the show example balloon method anymore. We have to write our own. I've just made another auto load called interface so we can put the balloon handler in there. We can copy the contents of the show example balloon method into here and just change the bits that are different. We'll call it show dialog, so we need to change the name and the recursive call. We need to put dialog manager in here so it knows about the get next dialog line method. And lastly, we change the reference scene to use our balloon. Then we can go back to our main scene and use the new handler. Now we have our new balloon. From there you can make whatever other changes you want. The last thing I'll touch on is generating translations. From this translations menu you can save a list of unique lines out as a CSV file. By default each line is its own key but you can also use static translation keys. You can either write them manually or generate them automatically. The benefit of using static keys is that if you need to change the specific words of a line, the key in the translation file won't change, so your other languages will always be pointing to the same line. It's also handy to use if you need to match up to voice acted audio files. So, there's probably stuff I've forgotten to mention, but that's enough to get you started using the Godot Dialog Manager add-on. If you have any questions, then pop them in the comments below or find me on Twitter. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.